Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and today's video will probably be the last of its kind. But before I talk about what I mean by that, I wanted to pick up an older video topic and create a better version of the LCD screen I originally made about a year ago. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get straight into the video. Now that I will be changing my content over the next few weeks, I wanted to revisit one of my earliest tutorials. So here's the new and improved LCD screen shader. It is now fully procedural and does not rely on any image textures. So let me show you how it's done. In this video I will not walk you through the whole process of creating the shader but rather the key elements of the LCD screen material. So let's start in a new Blender scene. I will firstly delete everything and then switch over to the shading workspace. Now let's add in a plane, enter top view with 7 and give it a new material. First off, we need to create our main pixel. These pixels might not be accurate, but I personally thought they looked good. First of all, let's add in a texture coordinate node and let's use the object coordinates. They are centered and this makes it a lot easier to work with them. Next, let's add in a vector math node and choose length. And you can now see that it gives us the length of each dot on the plane from our center point. And we can easily convert this to a circle with a math node, which is set to less than. And now we can clamp these values to a specific point. For one RGB pixel, we of course need red, green, and blue. So let's duplicate these nodes two times with Ctrl, Shift, and D. This way, they are still connected to our texture coordinate node. And now we have to offset each circle. But before we do this, let's clean this up a little bit and add in a value node and plug it into each of our less than nodes. And now we can control the size of each circle. Let's now duplicate this vector math node and set it to add. This way we can add values on each axis and control the location of our circle. Let's duplicate this again two times, just like this. And now we are ready to position each of our circles. But before we do this, let's add them all together with just a simple add function. And you can now see that our circle has become a lot brighter. This is because we didn't choose clamp. And now our values are back between zero and one. And we can now just adjust the position of each of them. And I think that looks good. Okay, the next step would be to add in colors. So let's add in an RGB node and duplicate it two times. This way we can easily change the colors. And let's go into hex and give the first one a value of 0000, 0, 0, 0 ff, which is blue. The next one 00, 0 ff, 0, 0, which is green. And the last one, and I think you know what I'm gonna do, which is ff, 0, 0, 0, 0. And this is red. Now we have our RGB colors and we can just add in a mix RGB node. And with this circle as a factor, we can mix our blue with a black background. Now we can just duplicate it and mix green with the factor of the second circle with our result of the first mix node. And the last one uses the same principle and now we have colors. And this is our whole setup for a pixel. We can now select all of these nodes and press Ctrl and G and also connect this value output to the group output and name our node group pixel. Now we have our colors as well as a mask. There's one thing I want to change and this is to be able to control our texture coordinates from outside of the node group. So let's connect this group input to all of the inputs for the texture coordinates. Let's exit our node group with tab and add in another texture coordinate node and connect it. And now we have our pixel fully colored. The next step would be to scale it down and tile it across a potential screen. But you can see that if we turn down the scale, our pixel is not tiling. And this was for me the biggest issue and earlier I fixed this by just converting this pixel into an image map because this would tile automatically. But of course this is not the best method if we want our screen to be completely procedural. So I went online and searched for a solution and I found this tiling node which is also linked in the video description that basically allows us to tile our procedural pixel across our plane. So let's just plug the object coordinates into the vector input and I'll use the tile output. But you can see that this doesn't really work and I was always facing some problems. The solution I came up with is to use an X and Y offset of 0.5 and an X and Y scale of 2 
and tile our pixel only in one quadrant and then duplicating both of these node groups three times and changing the offset values so our pixel tiles in the different quadrants. And now we can use a mix RGB node with a factor of one and add all of these node groups together. And once we connected a value node to all of the tile inputs, we can tile our pixel across our plane. And this is basically the base of this new LCD screen shader. But of course, I also improved how images work with the screen because now the image is actually being pixelized and every pixel is being multiplied with the according RGB values in the hopes that this would make the screen material a bit more realistic. If you have any improvements, you can tell me in the comments below. And if you want to use this material, you can download it on my Gumroad page for free. But this video isn't purely about this new LCD screen shader, but also about some content changes which will take effect next week. As you have probably seen in my latest community post, I've been wanting to change my content for a while now. And finally, I made the effort to do so. I've noticed that by only creating tutorials, I didn't have the time to work on bigger projects. That's why I will now start to shift my videos to a more vlog narrative driven style. You could compare it to the popular devlog format. So what does that mean for you? Well, over the next weeks, I will start streaming and producing longer and more in-depth videos about what I'm currently working on. This should give you an in-depth look into how I approach new projects. Hopefully, this will make my videos more artistic and this way I will also not feel pressured to come up with a video topic. And hopefully, everything works out as I imagined it. And this is basically it. This is all I wanted to talk about today. And we will see us next Saturday or even in a stream in a few days. But we'll see.